is what I love about training at different gyms. This is somewhat of a, a boxing slash wrestling MMA kind of gym. And so we don't have the normal, I guess, typical workout machines and all of the weights and dumbbells, barbells, plates that I would normally train at. So I'm having to quite literally think outside the box here. And uh, these next two exercises that I've kind of put together are similar to what I would do in a gym. We've got kind of a, a pressing movement that you can see here. I've got two Olympic bars pushed into the side of, uh, of the wall here with a plate on each end. And I'm gonna get under there and push them both as kind of independent levers, but as a chest press. And it's got a slight upwards movement because of the leverage and the angle of the Olympic bar. So really a great upper pectoral exercise. That's free weight. Then I'm gonna move over. So it's basically just a, a barrel, oil barrel. This is actually filled with liquid that's about 40 pounds. So three sets again, always trying to increase that intensity on every set, but trying to stick with that same rep range so that I have a constant in all of my training programs. And then it's really just, call it a barrel push-up. It's an incline push-up, and uh, as I push up, focus on applying pressure inwards, squeezing in to really hit that inner portion of the peg tool. So two nice exercises there, and uh, just going until I can't push past that burn. Explosive, hit those type 2B muscle fibers and short snaps of breathing like a boxer fighting in through my nose and blowing it out, keeping my, my mouth closed. I'm already feeling a pump, this is gonna, gonna result in a few reps, but let's try and get double figures. Another effect of high altitude training. Down at lower level, lifting weight, overloading the muscle with a stimuli, that being resistance. You can do slow reps, you can control it. Breathing out, contracting that muscle. Up here, the only body resistance, or the weight, is my body. So I could do that, but I'm gonna tire out quickly. And I wanna activate those type two and type two B muscle fibers. So fast and explosive when it comes to lifting your body weight. Oh man, I'm gonna get some water and then be back here for rounds two and three. Right, so I've upped the weight now. Works it to an extra 10 pounds on each. Let's see what we've got. This kind of training, you just got to go fast. You got to hold nothing back from the beginning. Go fast. You know your form and technique are so important, but so is speed and getting that explosive power down, which you may not do in the gym with a, a barbell, Smith machine, or any other free weight type exercises. So really, is switching up my training. Anyway, for the second part of this exercise, I'm going to introduce. Introduce a, uh, a step board. Feet up now, decline, 
morning pump, but the benefit of this is I can always kick this out and go back to my incline version. You can see, as soon as I start to slow down, the power goes, and I can't get that same rapid movement out. Two things can help me with that. One, creatine. I've used creatine on and off over the years, and it really is one of the best supplements that just works. I prefer using the micronized monohydrate creatine, using it with uh, alpha lipoic acid to act as a kind of uh, insulin mimicker as opposed to using sugar and then uh, sugar post-workout when I take another five grams of uh, creatine. And guys, check the description. I'll put the, uh, the amounts of all of the creatine and sugar in. And then the second thing that can help is, believe it or not, baking powder and honey. I learned this when I did a feature up here with uh, boxing coaches and uh, a ratio of one to three. One part baking soda, three parts honey, mix it together, take it, it's like a syrup, take it about 20 minutes before you do any high intensity interval training, such as this, whether you're an athlete, you're a boxer, anything that's focusing on endurance and power. And that helps buffer out some of the lactic acid that builds up in our muscle and prevents us from basically continuing at that same stamina, that efficiency. So maybe next time I'll try that and see how this compares. Enough rambling. Third set coming up, we're going to add a little bit more weight. No drop sets in there, no rest pauses. Like I said, it's not a conventional workout. As much weight as I can lift for a good 10, 15 reps. And then onto this one. And now I'm going to remove this stable factor and use that medicine ball behind, keep my toes on it. So I've got two kind of unstable platforms to then have to exert that force and push up my body weight. This workout is draining. It's fun, it's different. And it's nice to mix up maybe once every four to five weeks from my regular program. Thank you. Going slow just doesn't work up here. Uh, this one's going to be a challenge. Medicine ball. Toes on the medicine ball. Hands either side of the bow. The bow is moving back and forth. The ball is moving all over. This is where core really has to be that much more engaged. My intercostals, all of my legs, I mean pretty much everything. Full body exercise. Never actually done this one before. I just. Thought it'd be a challenge. so much more challenging 
I mean, I'm, I'm depleted, I'm tired, but taking away that stability of the previous set with my feet on that board, my triceps are firing like mad. That feels like I'm doing like a close grip, neutral grip, push, bench press with like 60, 80 pounds. I mean, it's my body weight, I'm like 185 right now, but I feel worn out. I feel like I've gone three to five sets of doing bench. I like that one. Give it a try. Okay, on with exercise circuit number three.